So as we talk about Tokugawa rule, we are discussing things that were talked about briefly in the last lecture. And what's most significant about this time period is to think about Japan unified under the rule uh, and um, its stability that's created um, by the Tokugawa ruler. And as something that I'll always mention, this is a problem that many nations face, sometimes even in modern times, where when centralized authority breaks down and that people are having conflicts, uh, um, you know, there's a sort of chaos, that there, you will lose certain rights or face a totalitarian or, or, or a regime or a ruler that will consolidate all power, but people still will like it better because it's creating stability. And um, so this is what happens with Tokugawa, Tokugawa rule in Japan. Now, we, I, <clears throat> prior to this, we were talking about Korea. We're also going to be mentioning China. And again, the map always helps kind of explain why we would be talking about all three. If you look here, here Japan is an island. And of course, it reminds us of the way that they could also isolate themselves to a certain extent. Korea, as you see, mixes with Manchuria or China here. And when you look at this geographic locality and you look at the circumstances here of these three nations together, you're going to understand a lot about what we're talking about um, here. But especially as we get into World War One, World War Two, and the Korean War, this geography will, will help explain a lot, okay? So Tokugawa rule and transformation of society. So here's some parts to jot down. Um, so Japan has three main classes. Samurai, the peasantry, and urban dwellers. Uh, and they were transformed, especially in this period, okay? And how this happened? Samurai became more civil servants than warriors. So before samurai were, you know, really tough because because first of all they were always fighting each other, and if you're fighting all the time, you obviously are um, a well-trained, tough fighter. But what happens when you create that stability and they're not fighting amongst uh, um, them themselves anymore? They started taking on different kind of roles. Some would say getting soft or getting indulgent in other things and maybe even becoming kind of like bureaucrats or something like that. Uh, farmers were heavily taxed. And farmers are always seen of as being conservative and passive, but you know when you're starving or when you're being really treated awful, revolt will always happen. So occasionally um, the oppressed uh, peasant class would often revolt. Um, and then another result of the transformation of Tokugawa rule was trade in urban centers becoming more complex. So these are some of the like developments in Japan like from this time period, okay? Now um, pardon the explicitness of the pictures in this next one. I mainly just wanted to show this as, as I'm dealing with samurai sexuality and leisure. Uh, the samurai uh, obviously were a privileged class, and um, these pictures depict them having uh, excessive situation, sexual situations with females and among themselves as males. So um, there's a lot you can read on that if you're interested in some of the more like kind of not always so talked about in flight company kind of uh, uh, things with. Um, Samurai uh, leisure. Uh, okay, so I'm going to stop there and I'm going to switch from that to Christianity and uh, uh, Western contact in Japan. And that's what I'll cover in the next lecture.